I'm not familiar with other species of crows around the world, but the ones here, American crows, I am. Over the years, the opinions of people have changed from not liking them to now many people loving them. Even still, some just don't like them and view them in a negative light. So I want to talk about their sweet side in this video. Maybe soften these people up a little? Ah, we'll see. More so, this video is for the people who do love crows, so I hope you enjoy. I could probably go on and on about how sweet they are, including things such as how adorable their walk is, which likely wouldn't help to change the minds of those who just don't like them. Or maybe the many stories out there of the people receiving gifts from crows they befriended. Or perhaps the way fledglings act might soften some people. I mean the level of curiosity and adorableness as they pick around their environment, trying to familiarize themselves, or the way they chase their parents around bagging, can be endearing. I'm probably going to have to dig a little deeper though to convince others out there of the sweet side of these misunderstood birds. Something more familiar and similar to us, I suppose. One highly sweet thing about them, reminiscent of us, is their extremely tight family bonds, and the way they cooperate together. Everyone in a family unit work together to protect each other, and even just enjoy each other's company when relaxing in a tree, or on a wire. Very rarely do you see an American crow alone. There is almost always at least one other nearby. Families can get pretty big too, having as many as 15 members, which include the mother and father, and their offspring from two to five different breeding years. Crows aren't able to breed until they are two years old. Even then, instead of going off to build a family of their own, some young choose to stay with the parents for a few more years, which is quite beneficial as it gives them more training and knowledge. They don't get to stay for free. They have to help out by looking out for dangers while other members forage or search around for food, help with locating food sources, and helping with raising nestlings and fledglings. It's pretty sweet to see the whole family pitching in to raise a brood. And how endearing it is to see family members snuggle together on cold winter days, sharing each other's body heat. But the one that I find most sweet is when they preen one another, something known as aloe preening, showing affection and care similar to us. This aloe preening can be done from a parent to its fledgling, other offspring, even older ones. In fact, fledglings sometimes beg to be preened by a family member, which is just incredibly adorable. And of course, the breeding pair to each other. It is so lovable to watch one standing or perched looking like it's in pure bliss as a family member preens them. Not all birds share this behavior. Normally, it's only the very social and family-oriented birds that demonstrate peer grooming, which helps to reinforce pair bonds, family bonds, or flock bonds. Bird-to-bird -bird grooming tends to be done only to the head and neck of the partner. This is because those areas are difficult for a bird to preen on its own with a beak and toenails. Normally, it's initiated by the one wanting to be groomed, by stretching its neck out or moving close to its mate or family member and putting its head down. I find it so sweet to watch, especially when the one grooming stops, causing the one who was being groomed to keep trying to get more grooming. And I love watching the one grooming move the feathers around with its bill as it works its way to the front. The look in the eyes of the one being groomed is clear that they are very much enjoying. So much so that when the groomer stops, the one being groomed stays still and appears to be dazed. 
Must be similar to us when we get a foot massage or something like that from a loved one. The fact that they allow each other to go around sensitive areas like eyes, ear openings, and soft under the beak areas exposed to potential damage is a display of a high level of trust the bird who is offering its head or neck for grooming has in its partner or family member. Besides feeling wonderful, there are other benefits to being preened, such as removal of parasites in these hard-to-reach places, connecting with a family member while keeping feathers in good shape, pretty darn smart and sweet deal. Have you ever seen birds preening one another? What is something you find to be sweet about crows? Comment below and let me know, and as always, thanks a bunch for watching. Take care. Happy birding.